even just breathing in and then breathing out for five seconds in, five seconds out, will change the alpha in the front of your brain. Feeling nervous before you approach someone? Five seconds in, five seconds out. That's going to help. In through the nose, out through the mouth. 40 days is what they'll tell you in India or China or the Bible. In the West, we say 42 days because 6 times 7 is 42 in 6 weeks. So either you've got the religious side or you've got the Hitchhiker's Guide. I don't really care. It's the same number, 40-ish. <laughs> What's going on there is that's the amount of time it takes us to build a new habit. You do it every day for that amount of time, it'll settle in, and then you'll decide to keep doing it or not doing it, but you'll feel the benefits. Your immunity gets better when you do this. Your brain functions. You'll find you're more clear. In fact, one of the guys who did this, uh, one of the entrepreneurs, said, I feel like I'm taking a mental shower when I do it. That's why I come here every Saturday, just because I'm better all week long. And I found in my own life that it made me better to the people who work for me. Like I was just a better manager and better at interacting with people because I was calmer. Now we get to the good stuff, training your heart. In case it hasn't been made clear by our speakers so far, <laughs> cardio makes you weak. Here's what we, what we haven't talked about, though. There's something called uh, an ejection fraction. It's the amount of blood your heart can pump in a heartbeat. People who are really strong can go from a little bit to one pump that moves a ton of blood. People who do cardio all, all day in a little spinning class, they have a heartbeat that goes da 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 It's even, which is because they're overtrained and stressed, and it, each beat pumps a small amount of blood. That's not optimal functioning whatsoever. It's actually inefficient. You want to be able to go from small to big. I'm talking about heart rate variability, though, is the main focus of this slide. How many of you have heard of heart rate variability? I got like three people in here, medical professional, friend, <laughs> uh, another friend. This is a device. I'm an advisor, an unpaid advisor to the company that makes these. It's called the HeartMath Institute. Been around for 20 years. Uh, you don't know it, but uh, a very large military organization just placed an order for these because they found out that troops who are trained to control their heart rate variability don't get post-traumatic stress disorder. That's basically destroying militaries all over the place because you see your friends get blown up and you don't come back from that. When you have your autonomic nervous system under control, you can and do come back from it. This little thing, let's hope it's charged, it is. It has a blue light, it's breathe in, breathe out. And on the top here is a light that goes from green to blue to red. When you're doing your heart rate variability right, the light turns green. When you do it wrong, it's wrong. You could practice meditation or something, but you'll do it wrong. How the heck do you know your meditation is right? You have no signal whatsoever. So the typical person meditating sits here and then close their eyes, they do the meditation, and they, they meander here, they meander here, and here, and here. It takes a lifetime. When you have devices like this, they turn red and bing when you fall off the path. So you go this way, no, no, go that way, nope. And you end up going up. So you can learn to do things that would take you years to do in literally six weeks. This is a huge, huge benefit for you. In fact, I will tell you, this is my most impactful in terms of amount of time and amount of money per, per unit of improvement, most impactful of everything. It's a $200 device. It's not even very expensive. And when you use it, it clips on your ear. It just gets a signal from your heart. But what you're doing is you're teaching yourself to have spacing between your heartbeats that changes regularly. Because animals with less spacing when their heartbeats are very even are stressed. In fact, oftentimes they're about to die. Animals with lots of variability, especially rhythmic variability, are metabolically more efficient. They're also more relaxed. This balances your autonomic nervous system. We all have these parts of us. We have our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. If you have stress in your life, which almost all of us do, you tend to be sympathetic dominant, which means you're actually you get more inflamed, but it also means that you're ready to fight or flight. So things come in. Your body doesn't understand the difference between a tiger about to eat you and the fact that you have a deadline that's coming and you feel a sense of impending doom because you might get fired. It doesn't understand that, God, I might fail when I go you know, to approach this, this woman at a bar. It's a sense of failure. And your body says, God, there might be a tiger, and your heart beats fast. You, you felt that, that nervousness feeling. This is your body doing its damnedest to keep you alive because there might be a threat. When you're in control of that and you can say, no, 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 this is not a threat, stop, and your body stops doing that and it starts obeying you, you have an unfair advantage. It also increases your brain function. 80% of the nerves between your heart and your brain 
run from your heart to your brain, not from your brain to your heart. Your heart is a seat of emotion, and it is part of your nervous system. In fact, it's part of your brain. You have a brain brain, you have a heart brain, and you have a gut brain. And they're an integral system, and they work together. And if you think this is just where you are, you're just up here, you're sadly, sadly mistaken. It turns out heart rate variability, when you're trained, will modulate your endocrine function, your hormones, and your immune function. You live longer when you have high heart rate variability. We're talking 10 minutes a day for six weeks to learn the skills. This device is just training wheels. This is the HeartMath Institute M-Wave 2. I have them on UpgradedSelf.com. You can click and order one. I don't make a ton of money from selling them. I just think that they're an important technology, so I try and get the word out. If you do this on a regular basis, you'll probably live longer. That's what the science is showing us. <coughs> the most bang for the buck. Here's a picture of what it looks like if you use the software. The device works by itself. You can plug it into your computer and get a real-time graph of your heart rate variability. When it looks like this, this is sort of the cumulative amount of time I've spent in, in a state of high variability. This is a graph of it, and this is a relatively good session. When you first start out, you'll see how chaotic your heart rate variability is. Or even worse, the line won't be anywhere near this big. It'll be kind of narrow and kind of chaotic, which means you have stress. That's all right, you're overtrained. You've been eating the wrong foods. You're not happy, whatever it is. The cool thing is, this is a switch, like training wheels, that lets you turn on happiness. You learn to ride a bike, you toss the training wheels. You do this for six weeks for 10 minutes a day, and you will have a new skill. Right now, we all know how to snap our fingers, but if you've never snapped your fingers, and I say snap your fingers, you'll be like, once you learn it, you know it, this is the same way. It's just a skill, and the skill is turn off stress, turn on happy. So you can sit in a room when someone's yelling at you. You can accept reject and being rejected over and over and over because it simply doesn't feel it. You don't feel it here the way you did before. You're in control. Number one, most like very impactful but also expensive and a little bit time consuming biohack, is you, you upgrade your head. Smart drugs is the first thing I recommend. Aniracetam is one of my favorites. Peracetam is another. And I'm kind of famous now for my 15 minutes because I've been on national news talking about another one called ProVigil. ProVigil has very strong upsides, especially for productivity and performance and jet lag and things like that, and for mental focus. I do recommend, if you can try it, and your doctor agrees because it's prescription, that you give it a try. Not necessarily to use every day, but because if you want to feel like what your brain is capable of when you have full-on focus, and you're just dialed in, you try this, and you understand what kind of a day you're capable of having with or without ProVigil. We all need guidance to show us how good we can be. And one of the points of the Bulletproof Diet and all of these recommendations is to give you one day, one perfect day, where you have limitless energy, you feel awesome, and you literally feel bulletproof. That's what it's about. When you have that day, now you have a, a yardstick to measure against. And you can say, okay, why was my next day not as good? How do I make it better? And you can start the process of improvement. But until you've had that perfect day, it's very hard to know what you're capable of. Provigil, while meditating, meditation is about focus and awareness. If you take a drug that helps you focus better and you meditate, you'll see what your brain can do. And then whether or not you're on that drug, you'll learn something from that experience. <clears throat>